Hello? Hello? Mom? Dad? Uncle Frank? Like, I know I'm live, but I feel awkward, like, saying anything to you guys until you guys talk back to me. So we're just going to hang out until, really, until the, cat, the chat catches up. Because surely as soon as you guys heard me say something, somebody said something. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Alexis says, and I refuse to let anything. I'm hearing, like, voices. So I can't tell if, like, something's going on on my phone, if there are people out there, if Jake has a TV on in here. Hey, everyone. Oh, Maggie, thank you, because I don't feel pretty at all today. I feel like, do you guys remember, well, if any of you guys have been watching my videos for a while, when I did that, like, uh, PR pro bono thing, and I said that I felt looked like a 90-ass, like, ambulance chasing attorney or something like that? I feel like that, or, like, some, like, a woman from, like, Jersey in the 90s was like, why don't you just give her all the money? If Sajak is in the room, Sajak will get that reference. But I did see that she gave me taco money. Thank you, Sajak. I don't know if you're here. I, I believe that she has a premiere. So if anybody knows what time that is, let me know so I can make sure that we're done here um, in time for her premiere. Thank you guys for the compliments. Sajak super chatted. I, yeah, I just, uh, I thanked her. I see that she's eating tacos. Awesome. <laughs> There's also, the, she mentions tacos and then a potato and steak, which not that those can't go together. Who's in here? It sounded like Atticus jumped. Um, you said, I'm hearing voices. You just left a video on a psychological thriller. Ooh, oh, that feeling when you're like, when everything, <laughs> everything makes you like jumpy. You wish you could wear prints like me. Thank you. I didn't. Surely you can wear prints. I think you can wear prints. I think a lot of people can wear a lot more things than they think they can. I pretty much just wear things I'm not sure. I think I've told you guys this before. Somebody didn't hear it. So I'm going to give you guys my bits of fashion advice every week, which I'm saying that. That's probably not true. And also, it's probably going to be the same bits of advice every time. I pretty much put something on, look in the mirror, and if I think I don't know, then I go, okay, you're going to wear that because people are going to like it. Today, I just felt kind of old. I look old. I'm 35. Give me a fucking break. Carolina, I look stunning, girl. Thank you. I don't know why you guys are being so nice to me. I, uh, you want like some real talk? I haven't been feeling like great. Like I haven't been down in the dumps. I haven't been like super anxious. I haven't been like sobbing and crying, but I will say that I've been just kind of like, ugh, just in a, ugh, in a mood and more real talk. I think it's because I accidentally missed my meds two days in a row. Sorry. Every now and then I like look at the chat. And so if any of you guys are on any sort of medication, that's like, it's, it's an antidepressant. Um, it's easy to know when you're missing your, you know, your sleep medication because you can't get to sleep at night. Or if you have anxiety and you take an anti-anxiety, it's easy to know when you need that because you feel fucking anxious. <laughs> but certain like maintenance medications like antidepressants, um, it's easy to, to miss those and to miss it two days in a row. And then I think usually when that happens to me, I start to feel kind of just like Ugh, for a day or two after that. You love my setup and background. Thank you. You like all my wine mom stuff. I shift things around just a little here and there. There you go. There's Christina's beautiful face. That was us in New York. I'm not going to say what hotel we stayed at because I'm pretty sure that the person who set it up for us, it was a prank. Um, yeah, missing the meds. It's not the, the worst thing for me. It just kind of puts me in a bleh mood. I wish that I could reach the, the cat, the one cool cat one, just over a little bit. I know that Naley's husband, we call him Mr. Nakey, if you didn't know that. He likes that. Um, if you're, hey, if you're showing up and you thought that this was some sort of pre-recorded video, haha, <laughs> surprise, it's not. Um, unless you're watching this in the playback, which means that it is not 6.20 Eastern Standard Time for you on Tuesday, June 30th. <laughs> I was trying to, trying to do that so seamlessly. 29th. It's the 29th. 
Um, but yeah, this is our weekly live public, I always get it wrong, public live event where we just have a conversation, dude. We just sit and we just talk. We go on tangents. It's conversational. It's disjointed. You guys hear me say this every week and that's because it's probably a good idea too, <laughs> but also because the first BAP or two, there were people that were coming in the comments and were like, what is this? What, I can't follow any of the conversation. Or like, why is she all over the place? It's like, because it's a live event and I'm talking to a bunch of people. Get off my ass. Um, Des, hi, sorry, I'm not going to be able to stay Aww. on a little road trip. Just wanted to say it, send some love and hashtag water gang. Thank you, Des. Oh, I hope your road trip is fun. Are you going anywhere fun? Is that something you can share with us? Do we have any mods here? Just asking because um, interesting, so I know. Does it, <clears throat> if not, or if we only have a couple, if people aren't available, then I know that I need to be available for moderating purposes. I see that Jamie's here. Um, oh, I, 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 Jamie might not be able to stay. Leaf is here. Hi. Oh, um, I'm Ayali Rivera in Mexico, I'm assuming. Hello. Uh, says, I know that you got it, but can we please talk about how Gabby tried to manipulate the audience with her series? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. That's pretty much all we're going to talk about. Um, we got four mods. Thank you, Melissa. We've got Leaf. We've got Melissa. Um, Mariana, I see. Yeah, I... <sighs> I, I, I owe a lot to you guys, to my mods, because I don't make this that easy in that, um, you know, we do these on Tuesdays at 6 p.m., which is like, and I, I log off of work at like 539. So you can only imagine how much I'm running around between finishing work and then coming here. And then my mom wants to call and ask if I've looked into like car insurance stuff. That's what she wanted to talk about. I would be like, oh, mom, if you're watching this, I'm just messing around. I love you. But like my family doesn't watch my videos, much less my live events. Uh, October says, spoiler alert, Trisha apologized to Ethan, the crew, and Hila, and it was actually a decent apology. Good progress. Interesting. So, okay. So let's talk about these videos, all these videos that are coming out. Oh, my God. Do I just need to make a video every single fucking day? Trisha's apology to Ethan? I have no. So here's the thing. I haven't seen it. Um, I had a very busy day today at work, but also I saw that Rachel put out a video titled narcissistic abuse. So I started watching that and then I realized I was running out of time and I saw that, um, that Gabby posted a part two to the Trisha, to the Trisha episode and that Trisha posted a video called enemies. And so I was like, Oh my God, clicking, 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 thinking that I got all caught up. And it turns out that Daniel Prada also <laughs> posted a video. So I was like, okay, I've got like 40 minutes. I can probably watch this video that he said he was going to try to cut down to under 45 minutes. And it was an hour long. And so I'm like, fuck. So I only got like a little over 20 minutes into that. I did hear where Trisha said that they would be apologizing to Ethan. Um, they said tomorrow. So I'm guessing that the video that they, this enemies video is yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about Trisha's apology. Um, I will be honest with you guys. I don't know if I will be saying much about it. Um, just be, I, I'll just be real with you because I feel like my opinions around Trisha, understandably people don't take it as in any way and don't take my opinions to be a normal amount of biased, um, because Trisha has shouted me out. Granted, they shouted me out over a year ago when I was saying they should be deplatformed. Didn't shout me out, but like put me on their uh, IG stories, which I think probably goes out to more people than Twitter. Um, does, I have like <laughs> the roof of my mouth at the very, very back, like where my jaw is hinged is like, it's like sloughing off. Sorry, that sounds disgusting. I couldn't find a cuter way to put that. Um, so... I, I, when I did hear Trisha say that they were going to give an apology to Ethan, um, I was very excited to hear that because I didn't follow the, the drama with them when it got like over to Twitter a ton. 
that was such a mess. And that was right before I took my week long break. And to be quite honest with you guys, I still feel like I'm being affected by that, <laughs> by that situation, um, by the fact that my opinions on that were not popular. Um, in fact, that might've been my, one of my most disliked videos, if not the most disliked video I've ever posted. So, um, I don't know if it's that or just me missing my meds for a couple of days in a row or what, but something has got me just feeling like, kind of like, and wondering if even, okay, do I say this? Wondering if, if YouTube is a nice place. I, 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 it might also just be like all the drama going on. It might be, I don't know, dude. I, I'm getting like just mean comments here and there, just like every single YouTuber does, just like I've always gotten. But for some reason, I'm just like every, every time I see one, I'm like, no other workplace, no other workplace. But then there are so many, I'm, I don't want to seem ungrateful at all for what I have here because I love, I love it so much. Um, but I think it's sometimes easy to lose touch of your core audience and sorry, I'm like <laughs> all over the place. Hey guys, I want to get to really know me. Um, Sometimes it can be easy to lose lose sight of your core audience in the things, the beautiful things that they have to say about you, which are kind of the reasons that a lot of us are like here, right? I look way too low in the frame. Oh, well. Um, and thus, then it's easy to lose track of, of the things that people love about you or at least appreciate about you, or even if they disagree with you, the fact that they can do so in a way that is is loving and respectful and all of that. And it's it's not fair to you guys uh, when we lose sight of that, but it happens because, you know, they say for every, for every insult, it takes 50 compliments or something like that, which I don't expect 50 compliments for every insult, but the, the, the mean stuff kind of sticks out. Olivia says, thank you, $10, my goodness, says, just want to say thank you for covering Gabby's series, one, because your personal experience and perspective is interesting, and two, so that I don't have to subject myself to it, sending you love and light, girl, thank you, um, thank you so much, I, who's calling me right now, we are not taking calls from 855, <laughs> oh, no, 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 we're also not calling emergency SOS. Hello, welcome to my live stream where I'm a fucking hot mess for two hours. Um, yeah, I, I love Olivia that you that you mentioned my personal experience because that has been um, my personal experience with Gabby has been a bit divisive with my audience. I think um, some people view it as me being even more credible because I've had personal experience with Gabby and some people see it as me being more biased. And both, I think, are valid, valid uh, opinions to have. Um, I guess there are some people that don't really think it affects things either way. Um, I'm trying to trying to let this loud ass truck go by, but also I'm trying to decide for myself um, whether it makes me more biased or just more informed. I think it's both. I think it's both. That's what it is. And I will say that when she says certain things now that I have experienced firsthand is like it, it, I do hear a voice every now and then. Like when she says something that completely like directly contradicts something that I experienced with her, I'm like, okay, well, okay. Where's my apology? Like I've apologized to everyone I've ever started anything with. Okay. Where's my apology? <laughs> like I'll think like things like that. Um, what are some other things I, I want to point out? Cause a few people have pointed this out, um, particularly in my discord, Fat Sajak, if you don't watch Fat Sajak's videos already, like, what are you doing? Like, she's gone from under a thousand subscribers to like 9,000 in the past like month. So like, hurry up and get on that train. But um, Fat Sajak pointed this out. And then now some people um, in my discord, I hope that it's cool if I put you on blast, but like Leaf, I know was, was pointing it out. Somebody else was helping them put together these clips. But when, one thing that um, Gabby has said a few times in these in this series is like talking about, I guess in particular talking to Trisha Paytas um, with Trisha Paytas doing the whole, um, like doing the vlog saying, I, you know, I, people ask for my address so that they can send me their books. And it's like, I'm not going to pr promote your book, blah, blah, blah. And then um, Gabby said, well, maybe she wasn't talking and Gabby says she, they, 
maybe they weren't talking um, about me. Maybe they weren't talking to me, but they weren't not talking to me, which is funny because I said in my video uh, talking about get my experience with Gabby Hanna, Gabby Hanna says, I'm having this moment where I'm like, do I really want to rehash all of that again? I just did it with my creep show video. Um, but there is a part, you know, if you didn't know, Gabby told her audience that I said that she wrote a song about me. <laughs> Um, which honestly, I don't even know what song that would be. Like, I think it's bad karma. You guys tell me, like, I don't even know. I don't know the songs. I'm not saying they're bad. I just don't know them. Um, I just remember her, her fans were saying in my comments a lot, saying things like, mm, her name makes you lots of money. Oh, it looks like somebody's using Gabby's name to make money. It's funny. Lots of money. And I said something like that on the phone. I was like, your fans are always saying this thing to me that isn't, isn't even like a, a song lyric of yours. And she took that to her live stream and said that I said she wrote that song about me. So, um, I showed in my video how that's so not true about how I didn't think that Gabby knew who I was for one, for two, I'm trying to like not put my hands like right on my mic for two, even if she did, did know who I was, I certainly did not feel important enough for her to be talking directly to me. And so I said, I showed a clip that I had recorded. I'd recorded a video about Gabby about this whole sentiment, the whole, it's so funny, my name makes you lots of money or whatever the lyric is that's about me. Um, I talked about it in a video that I ended up not posting, but in that video, and I showed the clip with the timestamp and everything, and it said, I know she's not talking to me, but she's not not talking to me. And it's by the same by the same logic that, um, that she was talking about Trisha Paytas. So it's just, it's funny. It is funny. Trisha's name makes you lots of money. I saw I saw that like 900k views on that podcast, bro. Like, no, you're not fooling anybody. Um, hey, Leah. So um, I don't even know how how to attack this topic because it's a right. Each one of these videos warrants a video. So hey, look, YouTube is telling me that I'm live now. Is it true? Is she live? So I'm actually pulling up Gabby's channel right now just to kind of go through and look at, no, don't start playing. Don't start playing. We don't want to hear your audio. Um, so I can just pull up the actual um, videos themselves. Ooh, Gabby's down to 5.6 million from, I remember this time last year, it was 6.18. Um, oof, that sucks. But Hello Leash was endorsed by Satan's butt crack. Hmm. I'm not sure how to feel about that one. Um, so, oh yeah. Um, Hales about regarding the Daniel Prado's video. Like I said, I wasn't able to finish watching it. I got, uh, no Packy. I don't think you're too late. We are, I haven't even really gotten into talking much about the series at all. Um, Hey, Ashley. I see my, uh, oh, I see Satan's butt crackers in the chat. <laughs> Thank you for the endorsement, Satan's butt crack. Um, but also, hello to my mods that have shown up. Um, even if you're just here to pop in to say hi. Thank you. So, um, please disclose your, my psychological education. I feel like I need context to when you're talking about psychological concepts. So, um, Al Aliska? I hope I'm getting that right. Um, I try to do my best. Um, I mean, how much does that mean? I don't know. But I, I try my best to state when I am giving an armchair opinion. Uh, Sylvia, thank you for the sticker. That's so cute. Um, oh, I see I got water ganged. Thanks, Blue. I'm going to have to pee really bad. I sounded like Jennifer Coolidge when I did that. I'm going to have to pee real bad. Um, my background, I don't have a background in psychology. Um, I do so far um, as a, a, an education major has one, like in terms of developmental psych, you do um, take courses on developmental psychology. So you do have, you have to have a basic understanding of how children 
develop. Um, granted, I got my degree back in 2007, so it's been a little while. Sleepless nights, $20, that's a lot. Please help me remember what I was talking about if I, if I forget. I've been watching for like a year, and it wasn't until this year that I decided to join the Discord. Gabby Hanna had just turned me off, including the makeup brush scandal. I love your channel. Thank you. That's so sweet. That's also a lot of money. You don't need to, don't, don't pay me so much money. Jeez. You could buy yourself something, a cute little top on Amazon or a tool skirt. Um, so I, I don't have any sort of, um, background in psychology that would make me any sort of professional. And I do try to say that like in, in a video, if I ever talk about psychological concepts, I will say like, I am not a clinician clinician. I am not a, men a mental health professional. In fact, I've, my channel was a little more uh, pegged as like a mental health channel early, early on. And I, once I realized that I was like, okay, we got to step back. Like, I don't want people to think that this is a mental health channel. Um, first of all, I think the mental health community can get toxic as hell. Of course, I'm in the dramatary community. So at least you know what to expect there. Right. Um, but I also don't, I've, I've noticed that people were asking my opinions on things that I was not qualified to speak on. And even if I said like, Hey, I'm not a professional, but like, I realize like I'm fucking up. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to speak on some of these things. Ellie says, remember to like the video. Love you leash. Thank you, Ellie. Um, in terms of just what I know though, um, I have been in therapy. I'm I graduated for the time being, like my, my therapist granted me, um, gave me her blessing to go ahead and take some time off from therapy, which is awesome because she thinks that I am at a point where I can give it a go and um, see how things are without. Um, of course, if I'm struggling, then I need to find uh, a therapist. I do have a psychiatrist. I don't know if this is TMI or if this is what you wanted to know. Um, but I, beyond that, I am just as interested in mental health and specifically brain brain science um, as anyone else is here in the chat. I mean, a lot of people in this community, you know, the people who watch my videos and and similar channels to mine are a lot of us are mental health nerds, and uh, I am particularly interested in learning how the brain works. And in fact, now this is just getting all kinds of personal, but um, when I go to therapy or I work with a new therapist and they always ask, what, what do you want? What do you want to get out of this? And I always put like at the top of my, my list, like I want to learn how my brain works. I want to learn how the brain works so that I can understand what's going on. So in terms of like what I learn in therapy, a lot of it is that. A lot of it is neuro neurology. Um, and then I watch a lot of psychology channels on YouTube. Um, but my favorite is probably you guys have heard me talk about Dr. Honda. So I don't know. I don't know how much of an expert that I'm not an expert at all. Um, but I can't not talk about the brain from time to time. Um, and, and who was it? The, my, the therapist in my audience has given me, um, a certification to use the word gaslight because I use it properly. <laughs> Marissa says, hello, wait, oh, hello, fellow, men, fellow psych mental health nerd here as a psych student. <laughs> hello, Marissa. Thank you. Alistair here says, hi, Alicia. Just wanted to say hello. Can't stay. My dog isn't doing all good on his legs or sore, especially his back legs. He's getting x-ray tomorrow. Sending prayers to your dog. I hope your dog feels better. I hope you feel more comfort once your dog starts to feel better. Um, no worries. Go take care of go take care of your pup, and we're all sending love. Um, yeah, looks like we got some psych majors in the audience. That's cool, um, and a couple of a couple of actual mental health professionals um, that I've talked to in DMs and who've also just been in the live chat. And then, in fact, the one um, what's her name, Lexi Mashad? Is that her name? She watches my videos, or is at least um, follows me on. Um, Twitter, but she's the one that people are now bringing up a lot when they talk about Gabby Hanna and how Gabby Hanna thinks that she can educate mental health professionals on mental health. Um, so yeah, there are a bunch of you guys out there that are into Sana Solo D is a psych nurse and somebody else said they're a therapist. Wow. Emily Broadstone is a therapist. Um, Leaf is a sociology student. 
I think that's I think that's a lot of fun. I find um, neurology, psychology, sociology, and anthropology they're all so similar. They're all so fascinating. Um, yeah, don't pick up the just the vocab. Make sure you're picking up. I'm, I'm sure you meant you're picking up the meanings too. Um, Zell, for fuck's sake, says, "Hey, view, lo hey, lovey's in chat, throwing some cash to a creator I actually respect, armchair psychiatrist here at LMAO. <laughs> hey, thank you for that." Liz says, "Hi, hi, hi." I made it. I've <laughs> been waiting on this one. Love you lots, Leash. As I always say, keep doing what you're doing. We love and appreciate you. Hashtag mental health professional here. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And thank you for your endorsement as a mental health professional and really just your presence here. That's really sweet of you guys. Thank you so much. You're making me feel a lot better. Um, uh, Laura Schlesinger. I don't know if, uh, that I know who that is. It sounds familiar, but I don't know that I know who that is. Amira says, Trisha getting... Get a restraining order challenge. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm interpreting that correctly, but I think it's funny if we're talking about Trisha and Gabby. So yeah, let okay, let's look at these videos that Gabby has released. I will be honest, I watched, I wasn't gonna watch them. I started to obviously let me just point point out what I think to be one very like glaring obvious thing. This girl is trying so hard. <laughs> to fit this series into 13 parts that now we have like uh, what Leah called an F a, a preface here. And then there was that whole unlisted. Well, now it's listed, I think, but just like an extra about Trisha. Then there was chapter zero about Trisha, right? Which was honestly like what I think to be speculation nation here, but just some sort of way of jumping on the hate train against Trisha. And when I say hate train, I'm not saying that it wasn't justified at all. I'm just saying there was a moment there where, um, where Trisha very much went out of the public fa favor very fast and Gabby hopped on that opportunity. And okay, so let's talk about Trisha. I don't know if it's smart to go straight into talking about Trisha because that's uh, such a loaded conversation, but I'm realizing so there have been a couple of videos about Trisha, interestingly, because this is supposed to be a 13-part series about different, various different topics, right? But it can't, seems like we can't stop talking about Trisha. We had a part, a chapter zero, which now it's not called that anymore. It's just called The Fight I Tried to Hide From You. Then another video called the time, A Timeline of a Friendship That Didn't Exist. Then we got the preface, the story time, confessions of a washed up YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. So that's all three three parts before chapter one. Then you have chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, and then a part two to chapter five. So now we are five chapters in, but we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine videos in. Five chapters in, nine videos in. So we're going to neatly package this into 13 chapters, right? But there's going to be who knows how many videos. So what's the point? What's the point? I mean... I guess you can call it different chapters, but don't call it 13 parts. It's definitely more parts than that. Um, and it does seem like, you know, it's hard for me to tell. <sighs> it's so hard because I there were certain things that in, in Gabby's, up until now, it has been very much like, like Gabby's obsessed with Trisha. And, and is delusional about her obsession with Trisha. And then, and then here more recently with her going on and on about the proof that Trisha, she and Trisha were friends or friendly or Trisha was, I would say not remembering, but Gabby would say was like gaslighting her by, by denying that certain things happened. Um, I think a lot of people came to agree that like, okay, it looks like Trisha was friendly with Gabby and Gabby took that to mean that they were friends and that's it. Like, let's be done with this conversation. But I think it's a good place for me to pause. Arcade Gamer says Gabby is just canceling herself with the series. She's just showing that she doesn't ever think she's in the wrong and that she's the real bull and that she's the real bully. Oh, like that's what she's showing. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. And she just so doesn't see it. Um, I will say, and this is how, to, to your point, Arcade, Arcade Gamer, thank you for the donation too. 
it's kind of like she's really just showing us that what we expected kind of like um like i'll be i'll be honest with you just because jesse said this herself but you guys know that i'm friends with jesse we don't talk every day but you know every couple days we'll check in and she's been feeling just sick with anxiety over like which way is this going to turn and you guys probably know or a good bit of you know that like if anybody has been mistreated in any of these situations it's been jesse smiles for sure and I was one of the people that Gabby talked shit to about Jesse before I knew who Jesse was. So you'll see it if you watch the live stream that uh, Gabby did about me. I told Gabby, oh, yeah, somebody told me that Jesse was a, a bully. And then uh, Gabby was, looked at Irene like, mm-hmm, see? But that was before I knew Jesse. For sure, Gabby's a mean person. And Jesse is, like, one of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, so I, I feel for Jesse in that. She is, she is, she's really anxious about this. And I would say it's justified and unjustified both at the same time. Like if I could make her not worry because like the, the public is on Jesse's side, so much on Jesse's side and so much of us think that she's so been wronged that like, I wish that she just didn't care. But at the same time, I see some of the comments that people send her way and it's just so vile. The thing, not only the things that people are willing to say, but considering what she's been through, it's like some people have pointed out that like, she's not even really active in the job. Like, yeah, point, point that shit at me and Jen Dent. We, we talk shit on Twitter all day, but Jesse doesn't say shit. And she gets her fans saying all kinds of nasty, horrible things about her, um, her pregnancy. You want to talk about fucking incel of the 21st century Nicholas Diorio saying shit about Jesse's pregnancy when Gabby stands were telling him to stop. What a fuckhead that guy is. Um, <laughs> sharks are dope. Thanks for the, the donation. Um, wait. Iris says Gabby Hanna has been talking about her and Trisha Trish being friends for way too long. Please Gabby Hanna drop it already. This series is just her rehashing everything that's gotten her to this point. I don't understand. Yeah, true. And also like not really telling us anything new. Right. So kind of, thank you. You kind of brought me back full circle going back to talking about Trisha and whether or not they were friends. First of all, with the, with the podcast, um, you know, the, the unedited part that Gabby uploaded and then this chapter five or whatever about Trisha Paytas, Gabby is really showing us things that she's already shown us things that we've gone over and over and over and over and over again with this summer's episode. So you're not teaching us anything new, Gabby. And if people have already made up their minds that Trisha was just being nice to you, like that's probably not going to change. Marissa says Gabby is digging herself a bigger hole and opening up old wounds and pouring salt in them just stop. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with Jesse. That's what I feel really bad for. Um, and the whole, I'm not going to say her name, but you know, the girl who was taken too soon, um, bringing up her name over and over again and then blaming it on everybody else. Um, how does Jesse feel about hashtag apologize to Jesse smiles? I haven't asked her about that specifically. I imagine that she appreciates it, to be honest, because I know that she gets so um, anxious. Because here's the thing. You want to talk about gaslighting. When you've been for years, you, you have somebody who was once your best friend for years and years and years, bringing your name up all the time, but telling you that you're the one bringing her name up. And then telling and bullying you and saying that you're the bully. All these things that I, I 100% believe that everything that Gabby says about Jesse is true about Gabby, not Jesse. Um, and it that's that can be a really big source of anxiety for a person. And I think that Jesse being a very real person, it does that to her. It makes it makes her upset and anxious. And so hearing that people actually support her, I think I can only speak on on what I've you know, what I think um, and what I know of Jesse. I don't know for sure what she thinks of this specific hashtag, but she seems to really appreciate any um, support that people send her way. I know that when she dropped those videos, she did not, she st stayed off of Twitter for a while. And so every now and then I check in and I'm just like, look, people are on your side, girl. And she, she felt good about that. Um, Jean says, um, I feel 
Gabby is very believable, but not credible. Hmm, interesting way of putting that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I believed her for a while, right? I thought, or I at least believed that she believed the things she was saying. Now I'm mm, mm, so so about that stuff. Um, there's another. Um, Oh, Sharks Are Dope says, hey, I have BPD and I hate the stigma over it. I get a lot of help with it and it is manageable. Love your channel. Thank you. If you retracted your last message and still paid me money, thank double thank you. <laughs> I feel bad if you deleted that just to, to send me more money. Um, but yeah, regarding the Trisha stuff that like you're showing us all the same stuff over again. There are a few bits of information that Gabby presented to us. Um First of all, I will say that she's said that she apologized to this person and that per person. She takes it all back. You cannot say that you've apologized if you take your apologies back. So if you say you, I've apologized to Trisha Paytas because I did this thing that ultimately hurt them, and then you, then you're just like, no, I would do it again. You do that. That's what mature adult human beings do. Then you're not sorry. You took it back. So stop saying that you apologize. You don't fucking apologize to anyone. Hey, Logan. Said this in Discord, but I think seeing creators across the YouTube spectrum coming out in support of Jesse really says something about Gabby. Yeah, you want to know what else? I agree with you. You know what else says something about Gabby? Is how little the whole, um, like, jumping on the Trisha Hay train did. How little that did for Gabby. Because... Um, and just really how every, like the whole of the YouTube audience, except for those like shitheads, Nick, the Oreo, Keemstar, um, Bo, Bo Blacks or whatever. I didn't even realize he was a YouTuber. I thought he was just some shithead that Amber was arguing with on uh, Twitter. But um, yeah, just the fact that all of these people are standing up and saying like, no, actually that person is the bully. The really sad thing in my opinion is that she is so decided that that it's popular to hate her, that um, ev just everybody, everybody is on a hate bandwagon. Why are you then? Why are you talking to us? Like we are your audience, the people that you're accusing of these things. We're your audience. So why are you even talking to us? Maybe go somewhere. Like go do your OnlyFans thing. Go make music. Like get off of YouTube and get off of Twitter. If it's so toxic and everybody is just on a hate on a hate train, or or crazy idea here because I'm a crazy lady who is also somebody who had an experience with you, so I must be out of my mind. Maybe listen to some of the criticism. Maybe because you can live your life, <laughs> you know. In in you hear a lot of people in AA say this. You hear Peter Mon say it a lot. I'll say it sometimes, but like when at the end of the day. Gabby Hanna is try working so hard to prove that she's right, that she's not doing anything that she needs to do to be happy. And so like at the end of the day, that's one of the things in A that, that I struggle with when people are like, would you rather be right or happy? It's like, well, I have both. <laughs> but um, if, if I am so unhappy, if you are really, really incredibly unhappy, don't you want to believe that there's something that you're getting wrong? Like, and I think Gabby pretends to think like that, but she doesn't. She um, she'll be like, "I've worked so I've told my my therapist so many times to tell me what I'm doing wrong. I think all the time that I'm a monster, but you don't." What she's doing is, and I've talked about people who do this, and I hate it so much, and I don't think that it helps anyone. It doesn't serve anyone. Not the person you're talking to, not the person who's saying it, and not anybody around them. You're talking about with Gabby. She's one of those people, in my opinion, who is either always right. Or you catch them in a moment where they are, the, in their minds, the worst person that, that ever existed. The scummiest person that ever existed. The world would be better without me. That sort of stuff. That You hear that sort of stuff out of these people. Either I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Or you're right. I'm so shitty. Everything about me is wrong. I can't get anything right. And you can't get through to either of those people. Ever. It would be, we'd be better off by most of us existing somewhere in between there. And she doesn't. So yeah, if you're existing either here or here, you're never going to hear the criticism ever. So it's like, it's unfortunate because like it's, it's putting Gabby in a position to where she's going to constantly be here. This is just me. Here's my podcast where I just get thoughts on Gabby. It's not even themed. It's just Gabby. <laughs> but, um, 
she's putting herself in a position to where instead of living in peace, instead of taking, taking the punches, like I've said, like it hurts to take in the criticism. One of my subscribers sent me an email and I read it today and it was a criticism about my last video and it, it stings. It stings to accept the criticism, but it stings a lot less to take the criticism, to thank the person for it, to recognize it, to, to value it for what it is. And then like, that person be that person be validated and then you go somewhere with it you do something with that with that discourse whether you come to an agreement or not you don't have to come to an agreement but if you can accept it if you can look inside at what you know what people are saying about you that may be valid or at least valid from their perspective you can't even take a moment to do that then you're just putting yourself in a position to where you're just fighting against the rest of the world your entire fucking life and that's got to be exhausting dude you cannot be happy in that headspace and socially you cannot be any in any sort of harmonious relationship i don't believe for a second that you have friend friends or or people who are close to you at all i don't believe it we don't see them and so that should tell you something i don't like and the thing is like i do feel for this girl at times Neely, hey, I heard this is where you catch the hate train. Is that right? Are you in need of a conductor? I'm available. Neely, I think you're already, I think you've assumed that position <laughs> or, or you're definitely one of them. Um, but yeah, um, in terms of any new information that Gabby's brought forward about Trisha with all this obsession of Trisha, there are some times where I'm like, okay, I mean, maybe she's right. Maybe she's right about some of these things about Trisha. You guys are sending me so many donations. My goodness. Uh, Gabby Hanna, Jean says, um, Gabby Hanna takes enough responsibility for her bad behavior to seem nuanced, but never truly processes that responsibility. Is that very superficial? They, yes. And I want to I say something about that in just a second. Um, Sullivan says, I'm new to this channel, but I value your opinion so much. Thank you. Gabby is exhausting, to be honest. I feel manipulated and it's exhausting. Love from France. Thank you to France. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's exhausting for, ev for everybody. I think for a lot of people. Um, and in terms of kind of how she takes responsibility, I take Gabby taking responsibility as kind of when people give general um, statements of responsibility when they're like, yeah, I haven't always been the best about this. Yeah, I can be this way sometimes, but never specifically saying like, oh no, I was wrong when I did this. I was in the wrong when I said this thing. And so I'm sorry for this specific thing that I did. You're going to hear me say that a lot, especially if you're new to this channel, um, is, is just how important it is for people to be specific about the things that they're apologizing for. It's so easy to give these like blanket statements about like, hey, I'm not a perfect person and sometimes I'm shitty about things. Sorry. And like, you can't get mad at me because I apologized. <laughs> Katie says, Gabby constantly uses straw man arguments, i.e. bringing up rice gum and the e-girl video, but ignoring the Jesse situation. Absolutely. Um, that's all Gabby ever does. Also with Jesse, within these arguments, like with Jesse, it's the whole, people are saying that I collaborated with Curtis. No, we fucking didn't. Maybe somebody said that somewhere, but that's not what people are harping on. Like, like move it forward already. Julia says, it says so much more about you and your platform that kindness is your expectation. Gabby's audience and expectation is burning it down. Unfortunately, yeah, that made, that like hit me like hard because I'm thinking about her stance and I'm like, yeah, it's that is kind of the culture over there is um, protect, attack, get Gabby Hanna's back, um, and it's sad. It's 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 a happy thing that I expect kindness and respect over here. And you're right, and thank you for putting that into perspective for me because here I am feeling kind of down about things at times when, in fact, like the people around here are so much. I don't want to say better because people are not good or bad or better than others, but people are so much more respectful on this side of the internet than some areas of the internet that I've gotten glimpses into. And so, yeah, you, you thank you for reminding me of that because that is something that I need to be grateful for. And I need to be mindful of in these moments where I'm like, oh, YouTube is a mean place and the internet's a mean place. And I just want to leave it all because it's actually... Um, I exist on probably the nice, some of the, one of the nicest corners of it. Um, and that's because of you guys. Um, 
Bet Davis says, give a like. Yeah, give a girl a like, please. If you have one to spare. Um, oh, I didn't even realize we have over 1,200 people here. My goodness. I mean, you guys know that I've got my thoughts on Gabby Hanna, and I've been giving those thoughts away for free on Twitter. Um, but also, I haven't really been talking about her on my channel much, although there's been a lot going on with her. There's just been a lot going on in general. My God. And especially with all these videos that are coming out. I haven't even finished my thought that's that I started like 25 minutes ago. The thing about these videos about Trisha Paytas, let's say that Trisha's totally in the wrong, that that they are obsessed with Gabby. That some of the things I was just like, huh, that's interesting. Kind of like where um Gabby had proof of Trisha saying that like they didn't know who or they only knew who Gabby and Jason Nash were on the vlog squad billboard. And then later saying that they didn't know who Jason was. Um, also like the, I can also see somebody doing that because it's like, they're going to go on a date with somebody and it's like, I kind of know who this person is, but I'm like, don't want it to sound like I'm a fan. But anyway, I'm like I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but some of these things I'm like, uh, there's also the whole rice gum thing where, um, I don't think it's a super strong argument for, I, I might have to do a different BAP on each one of these damn videos. My God. Cause this is, we're just talking about Trisha right now. Um, but Gabby bringing up this video where Trisha was being super nice to her in 2016, 2016. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't, because I said something nice to you five years ago or nice about you five years ago. One doesn't mean I think that now. And two, it doesn't mean that I remember everything that I said. There are tons of videos that I've made a year ago that in less than a year ago that I don't remember what I said. But, um, but that aside, um, she does show us that, that Trisha very much was um, on her side when the whole rice gum situation came out. I do genuinely believe Trisha forgets these things. Trisha offered $1,000 to anybody who could find proof of her ever eating or sorry, them ever eating a hot dog in their life. And then I quickly searched Trisha Paytas hot dog. And there's a whole, I remembered this video that they did in the parking lot of a Seven Eleven, making fun of, um, it was actually, if you didn't know, it was a, a parody of Emma Stone on SNL being like a hot girl on a poster and Pete, uh, on Pete Davidson's wall. And so Trisha's doing this thing where she, where they're like, I'm eating this big, stinky hot dog, this hot dog. So I genuinely think like Trisha does not remember all of the content that they put out there, especially because so much of it has been trolling. Anyway, even so, even in these moments where I'm like, hmm, okay, Gabby's, Gabby's got something on Trisha. Maybe Trisha was not honest here. Um, and like, even still, I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, so what? You've been such an asshole to all of the internet and to the person you're talking about. Let's be real. You've been such an asshole that it doesn't really matter. And I think that's genuinely how people feel. And I think that's genuinely how people said we're all probably going to feel when this series comes out. They were like, everybody was saying it's not going to matter because she's already dug her grave. There's not really much that she can say. And it's going to pit a lot of people against her. And that's exactly what's happening. It's Nat says, I think the key difference between Gabby Hanna and Trish is that Trish doesn't pretend to be a saint. Gabby Hanna does. Um, yeah, I agree. And part of me wants to be too careful about my opinions of Trisha Paytas. And then part of me is like, no, you have to say what you think, because even if people don't like it, like at least you're staying true to yourself. And that eventually will, doesn't necessarily mean people will come around to agreeing with me. Somebody took, somebody called me an anti-Semite and said that my saying I need to hold my ground means that people will eventually come around to my anti-Semitism. For one, I take offense to that. No, I'm not an anti-Semite. Um, but what I mean is that like you'd stay true to yourself and then the audience that forms around you will be the proper audience for your, that fit your opinions, not necessarily agreeing with them, but are compatible with what you have to say. So, it's interesting because both of these people were saying very similar things about themselves. They were both saying like, I'm a nice person or I'm not a mean person. And I don't necessarily think that those things are true of either of them, at least like all the time. We've seen 
we've seen Trisha be very nice. We've seen Trisha be very mean. We've seen Trisha own up to the very mean things that they've done just about every time. And I've always, I say this, I'll say it again, and I will probably say it every time. Nobody needs to forgive Trisha Paytas or anyone for their past transgressions, even if they've apologized. So if you're out there and you're saying like, I don't care if Trisha's apologized, this was painful, this was hurtful, this was offensive or whatever, believe that, Stay, stick to that. That is your belief and it's completely valid. And I think, and that's the thing too, Trisha gets that. Trisha said, I have, I have apologized for these things and I will continue to apologize to them for them to the end of time. And also like, I get it, people hate me and, and they have a reason to. Gabby doesn't get it. Gabby doesn't get that she's given people reasons to not like her. She's never truly apologized for it. She doesn't really truly recognize how problematic she is. I will say, Trisha, I think Trisha does recognize how problematic they are. So many loud vehicles. And also I need lipstick on the inside of my lips. Um, so... Trisha is definitely a flawed person, but I don't believe they're a truly malicious person. Gabby, on the other hand, not so much. Thank you, Kai Kane. Um, you said exactly what I was thinking, and I was losing track of that thought. I need you guys so much. <laughs> um, I That's one thing that um, they both were saying. was like, I'm a nice person, or I'm not a mean person, or I'm not malicious. I don't believe Trisha to be malicious in nature. I do believe that they will be get in these moments where they are malicious and it's almost like a blackout moment. And that's what we saw on frenemies a few times and what I'm assuming they apologize to Ethan for, but I haven't seen yet. So I won't give opinions on that until I see it, but I've seen the apologies for past transgressions. And, and, and I would go so far as to say is that Trisha recognizes that in those moments, they are being toxic. They are being mean. They are going for the jugular and all of those things. And it's a lot easier to forgive somebody who's self-aware like that. For Gabby to be like, oh, sometimes I wonder if I'm the monster and like, I'm not perfect. And like, sometimes I'm a bitch and like, sometimes I'm problematic, but like, I'm not going to take ownership in any one of these situations. And it's like, no, but you are malicious. The thing is that, here's the difference. I don't think Gabby, I've said this before, Gabby needs a vocabulary lesson. She needs several of them. She doesn't know what it means to be malicious. I think she thinks that being malicious is being evil through and through. Also, she said that her therapist called Gabby or Trisha Paytas evil. A good therapist is not going to call anybody evil. Anybody. A good therapist doesn't think that people are evil. I will say my therapist has had some, has given me some thoughts, some foods, some food for thought about Gabby and suggested that they're at least based on what I told her, you've got to be real when you talk about therapy and like what therapists have said and, and recognize that therapists are flawed and that they're only going basing, basing what they're saying off of the information you give them. But like, based on the things that I've told my therapist about Gabby, like they have suggested that there are, um, traits of person, personality disorders, not necessarily saying that, that she has a personality disorder, but has talked about traits of narcissistic personality disorder existing in at least the, what I've expressed to my, my therapist. So how did I get there? <laughs> I was saying something. Um, she does have something blue. Yes, that's the best way to put it. Um, oh, but I, I don't think... Um, Samantha, Gab, and T mirror each other and show it in opposite ways. Yeah, I think that they are similar in many ways. Um, and that's just why a lot of this is so just like, because they're going back and forth. And you're just like, you guys are just going to keep going forever. Um, and they both like saying the other's obsessed with, with, with whatever. Um, but I, I think that Gabby thinks that there are people who are bad, evil, malicious and there are people who are good, kind, girl boss, right? And the difference, in my opinion, okay, um, I for, I'm so sorry I forgot your name earlier from earlier in the podcast, but here's me being an armchair psychologist for a second. I think that, or what I've been taught, is that almost every single person on this planet is just doing their best. 
doesn't mean that they are doing the best that they're capable of doing. It doesn't mean that they are doing the best thing that is possible to do in that moment. It is not, does not mean that they're using their best judgment, but people just think that they're doing right. People are just trying to, to hang on. People are just doing what they can do. I guess that's a better way to put it. They're just doing what they can do. And most people, most people have good intentions. And that's what I think Gabby's missing out on. And what a lot of people do in my armchair psychologist opinion, in my unprofessional opinion, um, I think that a lot of people, good people, well-intentioned people, will venture into a malicious territory once in a while and justify it for whatever reason. And I think we've all done it to some extent. I pride myself on not breaking like the rules of fighting very much, but I'll occasionally call somebody a name. I called Nick Diorio a shithead or a fuckhead or whatever, a shit fuck. I'll call him all of that. Um, and because in my opinion, it's justified because of some of the things that I saw him say. Um, I try not to do that <laughs> a ton, but I think I, I'm sorry. I have to think about the hate mob that was sent on me last summer as an example. I think that that's a really good example of Gabby feeling like this was something that she was justified in doing. And it's funny because on her was it about, was it the, was it the Trisha episode or was it uh, the escape the night narcissistic abuse? One of the trademarks of narcissistic abuse is a preemptive strike. What was that? What was that live stream, Gabby? No longer accepting lies and manipulation. I hadn't done anything. Oh, did anybody, I'm wondering if anybody actually paused um, my video last night that showed where I showed my, uh, my text that I sent Gabby before she went on live stream. Cause I reread that today and I was like, wow, this is the, this is the text that Gabby and creep show went on to tell everybody was me saying, I'm going to, I'm going to say you manipulated me and I'm going to expose you. And so don't get off on a tangent, Alicia. I think that Gabby felt justified in being nasty and malicious and she justifies her behavior. She, she rationalizes it away all the time, especially like saying that I'm just responding to this. Well, guess what, bitch? Everybody thinks they're just responding to things. Everybody thinks they're just responding. When I go on Twitter and I start a whole new thread that nobody asked for about Gabby Hanna, I'm responding to the feelings that she put in me with her behavior. We're all just responding. We're all responding to something. So you're not special. Carolina says, I feel like Gabby cried about not being listened to for so long in her series is basically everything we already know. Anyway, just you, hashtag water game, which I'll take that to mean hashtag water gang because um, I also need the hydration. But um, no, not just you at all. Thank you for saying that because it is true. You're not telling us anything we didn't already know. And in fact, you're just prompting people to come out of the woodworks and say the things that we, they haven't told us. Um, Sarah says off topic, just wanted to say, I hope you're enjoying Savannah. Thank you. I miss it so much. And I hope to move back one day, former SCAD student. I'm jealous of you because I, in adulthood, I started doing, um, online art school, the Academy of Art University. Don't go there. Don't do it. I'm a hundred thousand dollars in debt. I don't know how I'm going to pay it off, um, with a degree I didn't even get. And I remember thinking like, I'm an idiot. Why didn't I go to SCAD? I, w I went to Georgia Southern, which is 40 minutes from here, which is a nothing, like that town is a nothing town. Sorry for anybody who might live in Statesboro, but like you probably agree. But here Savannah is nearby and it's a beautiful, beautiful city. So comfortable, so laid back, so everything amazing. And also it's a, it's a city where there's an art school. So it's like cool in that way too. So jealous of you that you got to go there, but also you're jealous of me that I live here now. So, Hey, like tit for tat, right? <laughs> Um, but thank you for that. So um, your sister goes to SCAD. Cool. Lucky for your sister. Um, so that's kind of what I think just about the, just about the Trisha videos. The, that um, even, even if you do finally prove a point, Gabby, you've gotten to the point where you've, you've convoluted this situation so much. You've angered people just by bringing it up so much. You've also like upset people just by like harping on how much somebody was your friend. And I think that, I think that it upsets everybody. 
Um, Zell said, girl, let's get a coffee. I can't drink coffee these days. It hurts my head. Um, I think everybody, or a lot of people, not everybody, because some people are typically tend to be on the other side of this coin, but a lot of people know the feeling of, um, of feel that way. And, and it, it's especially if you have any sort of conscience, then, then you feel, or like compassion, then you feel bad because that person thinks that that of you and you don't think that of them. I've been there. I've been, especially with having a YouTube platform, I've been there. Um, and, and I've also had, there is one person that in, in particular that I can think of that wanted so badly for me to say that I was their friend. And then because I didn't really just got so hurt that, that like legitimately has gone on a hate campaign against me. Like when I say hate campaign against me, I mean it. I mean, this person, as far as I, from what I was told, tried to get me on this Gabby series because I didn't, I didn't see her as a friend. And it's a, it's a really uncomfortable feeling. Like I'm, sh I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir a good bit here. Um, so when you hear Gabby going on and on and on and on about how we were friends, we were friends, you were, you, we, you said this and you said that, and you did the, you bought the shirt that I wore. You, you said you were obsessed with my videos. Like the, all these things are like really nice sentiments, but does not a friend make. And so it's, it's just, it's painful for a lot of people because we've either been, we've been on either side of the coin and, and like, we get that it's painful for you as the person who thought you were in a friendship that you were not. But like at the end of the day, it's just like it, honestly, Trisha said this and it's exactly like this. It's just like thinking that you're dating somebody when you're not. You can be in love with somebody that you've been seeing or sleeping with or whatever for however long. And many of us have been there or somewhere near there and they won't make it official or they, or you find out that they're seeing other people or whatever, and it hurts. But that's just because that is something that is a relationship that requires consent by both parties to be in it. And so if you don't have Trisha's consent to be in a friendship, you're not in a friendship. In fact, in all of these screenshots, does Trisha ever say friend, friendship, friends? I could be like, maybe, maybe, maybe they do, but I don't think I've seen anything like that. Blue had an epic response to that on Twitter. <laughs> I want to know, but also like there's way too many things I need to click around and check before. Let me read a couple of emails before I give any more opinions because we've already been at this for an hour. Um, this is not the email address I was about to pull up. I have so many emails these days. I have to check. I have to keep like four tabs open all day. Okay. So I have a few emails here to read. So my first one was from Molly. Molly said, and I had to kind of clip some of these because some of them were a little bit long. Molly says, um, she is a nasty piece of work who has been so disgustingly vile to you and basically anyone who even slightly disagrees with her from what I've seen. It looks to me though that the way she is acting now is just a ploy to get her views and attention because infamy is still fame. I might be completely wrong here because I'm not a psychologist or a mind reader, she doesn't come across to me as a stupid person, though. A selfish and just generally disgusting human, yes, but not stupid. Yet, what she's doing right now is incredibly stupid. She is spitting out so many lies. People have receipts to prove false, but she won't stop and keep saying they're all bullies or blaming ADHD and having an ED because she knows it will trigger people to respond to clear their names or to call her out for using these things as defenses all of all the time. It's like the more anyone talks about her is the more she wins in this situation. And it really angers me. She is, she has ways to push everyone's buttons. And of course, and of course you want to clear your name when you're being falsely accused, but I feel like everyone is just playing right into her hands. No matter what reaction she gets, she's still getting a reaction and that is all she wants because it makes her the center of attention. I see she's following a lot of her stands as well. And I can't help but see who that uh, as some kind of way, some kind of grooming in a way. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've talked about this. Like a lot of these stands are just kids and her following them gives them so much clout. So they will die on the sword defending her just to get her to notice them or something. And that 
just feels really wrong to me. She's enabling this army of monsters who are saying such abhorrent things defending her, whereas any other decent YouTuber would instantly berate a fan for doing something like this and apologize on their behalf or something. Yeah, absolutely. I don't fucking stand for it. Anytime somebody says there have been there, I'm sorry, two liars. There have been two, yeah, two, one or two liars recently, who, in my opinion, who have said that Masha and that I don't say fans, I don't like that word. It occasionally slips out when I'm like talking about all these these things, a platform, followers, viewers, fans, audience, blah blah blah. But in general. But other people will say, hell, Alicia's fans are coming for me and they're harassing me. And every time, anytime that those claims are made, what do I do? I ask them, please send me screenshots. Not to be like, you're, you're wrong. I don't believe you. But to say like, hey, let me see what's going on so that I can address this if I need to address it. Because if somebody is out there, if, if any of y'all are out there defending me, but being assholes to people, like full offense, like, that's shitty of you because you're making me look bad. You're not making me look better. Play within the rules. Like, defend people if you want, but there's there's such thing as playing by the rules. And um, harassing people is not within the rules. And um, in any of those cases, these people have not been able to come forward and show any proof that they're being harassed. But I want to be given that opportunity, if that's happening, to say, to that to speak to whoever is specifically doing it, or just to say that I disagree with that behavior. And a lot, I'm not special. Like this person said, most decent YouTubers would do that. Um, and like even Demi Lovato said, like my fans are great, they're passionate, sometimes they're out of line. And, and to the grooming comment, yes, because these kids I noticed, and I, I'm gonna say the word kids when referring even to, the, a lot of them are in their 20s, will, they fight so hard so passionately, so mean that in, in order to get her attention and then she follows them and that is a reward of sorts. So she's rewarding this really, really bad behavior. So it's instilling it, it's perpetuating this behavior. And then she says, P my fans are allowed to stand up for me. They're hurt for me. You know why she says that is because she doesn't have friends. Sad. I'm not saying this to be mean. It is just the truth. She doesn't have family. I mean, she's got, I think she has an okay relationship with a couple of her sisters, but this is somebody who is is a loner. And this, I'm not trying to be, I'm not try, be trying to be mean, but I'm being mean. I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm saying this factually is that I believe this person to be a loner. And when you are so alone, and you are so miserable, and all you hear is people disliking you online, I think it's really easy then to be like, yeah, whoever wants to defend me can defend me. And however hard they want to go at that is going to make me feel better. Like, I, I don't envy Gabby Hanna. I don't want to know what it feels like to be in her position right now, which is hilarious because up until not long ago, how many of her fans were saying that I was jealous of her? How many? Okay, let's take a moment <laughs> to talk about the Britney Spears um, or the free Britney comment. If I didn't watch, somebody showed me a screenshot where Gabby posted a reply to one of my tweets. And the funny part is that the reply, the person that was replying to my tweet was speaking sarcastically because there, I don't, if you weren't there that day, then I'll kind of give you a brief rundown of what happened. There was some, I don't remember what all we were talking about, but there was some sort of like, kind of like tension between me and Gabby. And, oh, it must, it was right after the Cecilia stuff. So of course she was, you know, like standing up for Cecilia against me, but being a dick to me. And um, I said something online about how Gabby was tweeting about me. And then she said something like, I was talking about hashtag free Britney, but I'm sure somebody's narcissistic enough to think that it's about them. And um, what's funny is that in the original tweet, whatever she said, um, one of her fans said, I think it was Tyler, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Tyler. Um, one of her fans said, they're just jealous because, <laughs> because you're more successful than they'll ever be. And Gabby's response was, I know, LOL. And then in the follow-up tweet, she says that that was about Britney. What? 
And so I said, I said that like, um, I called her out and I was like, yeah, of course she's going to go and, and pretend that this is about Britney Spears. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I called her out on it. Um, and so then one of somebody who follows me, I think was saying something about like, oh yeah, now, now she's going to make a video about Britney Spears and blah, blah, blah. And, and something like that. And Gabby ended up using that in her video, not realizing that it was ironic, that it was sarcastic, funny. Um, but yeah, this person keeps saying like, she's not stupid. And I do believe that being mean, here's my armchair psychology again. I think that you being mean typically requires a certain amount of intelligence. Of course, you can just look at somebody and be like, you're ugly. You're fat. Like those things are mean. And it takes no intelligence to say those things. But in order to be just kind of like underhanded and dickish about things, I'm just kind of like just a malicious asshole, you do have to have some sort of intelligence. Um, and I think she has, she has enough to be like that. Um, Naomi says, as someone who works on a hundred million dollar plus movies and TV shows and uh, sorry, shows and movies, I wanted to contextualize Gabby. Oh, there was something else I wanted to say before. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I've, grappled with whether or not to say this because it's so sensitive. So trigger warning, I'm going to talk about Gabby's mention of ED. And really Gabby's mention of this person uh, who I was reading before was mentioning like Gabby hasn't just mentioned ED, mental health, ADHD, but also unaliving oneself. It says my connection is unstable. So I want to make sure that you guys are hearing me before I go on. Are we good? Like if I'm going to give it a couple seconds because I know there's a little bit of delay, but are we good? Somebody tell me like, yes, we are. or no, we are not. Because I don't want to get into something really sensitive and like come back. Like, Okay, you can hear me. Thank you, Leah. Uh, mostly hearing me. Okay. You're getting a little bit of lag. Um, yeah, Jake's not even, in, even home. So I know he's not using the internet and mine is good. Okay, so we're good. So I'm about to talk about something sensitive and I am preemptively very sorry if I offend anybody with these mentions, but I am sick. Yeah. I'm sick of hearing the mentions of ED, mental health, ADHD, and uh, casually just saying the, she's just she can jump off her balcony or telling Jesse smiles like, yeah, you should feel that I, I am fucking, you know, an aliving dull. I don't know what the word we use for that <laughs> to, to as the adjective. Um, thank you, Carly's life. Um, but these mentions, they, they are, they're such cheap grabs at sympathy. They're so cheap and it's, and it's considered abusive for a reason. I had an issue with somebody and I'm not going to get too into it because she and I have, have pretty much ironed this out, but there was somebody who used that, on a, in, during a disagreement with me, the whole I'm unaliving myself to get an upper hand in a conversation and has, and I considered at, at that moment, I was like, this is abusive. And people have said that's emotional abuse. That's something people do as a tactic in relationships. And it's emotionally abusive to do that shit. And that person who did that has come to actually apologize to me and, and agree that that is, um, that is abusive. It's an emotionally abusive thing to do. And so it's just, it's a tactic and it's cheap, but I also like, I also don't understand all, just, I guess all the hypocrisy, all the like mention of, you know, I'm like the, I'm so happy or that, but also like that was the most depressing time in my life. But also we can't mention that we are concerned that Gabby Hanna is promoting EDs to her young fans because like she's explained to us a couple of times, or maybe because I was rewatching the enough podcast to find that clip for my video yesterday. But you know, the girl that she sicked her fans on much in the way she did out to me, she did because that girl called her out and said, you're promoting EDs to your, uh, your young fan base. Maggie says, my ex abuser used that manipulation tactic multiple times. It's horrible. Thank you for calling it out. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. That's awful. I'm sorry that you experienced that. It's terrible. It's terrible. That is the, like, if that's what you have to threaten in order to 
get somebody to stay with you? What kind of happy relationship? I mean, of course, like if, what kind of relationship are you forcing somebody to be in with, with you? Like, yeah, I don't know. Ugh, it's gross. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, so she sicked her fans on that girl. The reason I keep doing this is because there's a hair that is like re t tickling like the side of my nose. <laughs> um, because this girl said, and, and like, I, I would agree that it's not nice to say it in such a fashion. That's like, Hey, look, you have such a flat ass or something like that. But Gabby's reasoning was this girl pointed out that um, I'm promoting EDs to my young fans. And she says, I was at the height of my ED at that time. Okay, so then maybe that girl was onto something, you think? And I was really afraid to say that in one of my videos um, because I was pointing out how she was saying, again, trigger warning, we're gonna have to talk about calories and stuff for a second saying that she was only eating like watermelon and she and eggs and she had 900 calories in five days. And then she's posting pictures of herself saying I'm at my lowest weight and the smallest waist size since junior high. And I'm feeling so healthy and strong. You're not healthy and strong. If just that prior week you were eating 900 calories in almost a week, you're not healthy and strong. You know, you weren't healthy and strong at that time. But she goes and she posts these like thirst trap photos, which otherwise I would be like celebrating you, girl. Like, and in a sense, I still do because, you know, if you're feeling good, even just for a moment, then feel good for, for a moment. But then you display this behavior and then you display these two behaviors that are not responsible to display at the same time when you're taught, when you're, especially when you're dealing with, with impressionable fans, the young multiple minds that you told us brands want you to have, right? So when that girl, um, I think she said that it was also at the same time that the honestly, she was recording the honestly video. And that's when she became friends with Irene. She was at the height of her eating disorder. Then she also told us that during escape the night that because that Daniel and, and, um, and Joey were so oppressive for not having the food that she needed because she was at the height of her ED. And then there, I feel like there was another time where it's like, um, oh yeah. And I, by the way, I pointed out to you guys that I was very concerned about the relationship that Gabby Hanna had with the gym. I don't think it's healthy. That's what I said. I said that I've, I've known people before that use the gym as a means of keeping their, all of their anxieties managed. And then what happens when they can't go to the gym, something really terrible happens. I think I believe, I believe I talked about, um, an ex who is an alcohol or I was going to say was, no, we, we stay alcoholics who was drinking heavily and then, and, but managed his, um, his anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis by, um, working out and then had a serious injury, couldn't go to the gym and then almost burned down his apartment. I had to go, I had to go check on him and found a, a, uh, a pot of spaghetti was completely black on his stove. Um, and, and several years prior to that, I had said to him, like, you're always at the gym and you say that you need to go to the gym and you get antsy. If you don't go to the gym, it makes me wonder what's going to happen one day if you can't go to the gym. And he told me that he would find another way. It's it like, and, and I'm kind of glad that she said it the way she did. She was like, it's an eating disorder, dude. Like, yeah, it's an eating disorder, dude. And the fact that she hurt her leg that one time, and then so for a while she was out of it, and she went and spent eighteen thousand dollars on cosmetic procedures. To me, was just more of an indication that this is an eating disorder, and you're kind of glamorizing it and using it for content. You're not showing the nasty side of this. There were some moments where she was like crying in them, but it was more just like, mm, like look at the, all these like little procedures that I'm gonna try out. It's like, no, you're showing us the the disorder that you have and you don't realize that you're being that you're that you're displaying something unhealthy for your fans because in the same breath that you're saying and doing all of that you're also taking photos of yourself in your underwear and in swimsuits and saying I could fuck both your parents but I choose not to daily reminder have a great day so I'm sorry I'm sorry if that I genuinely I'm sorry if that if that offends anyone I just find it to be horribly horribly irresponsible. Karen says, um, if she was having S ideation while seeing a therapist and wasn't put on hold, then that therapist should lose her license. Yes. The question, big question is, 
was she seeing a therapist genuinely and was she being honest with her therapist? I heard somebody say recently that she did talk about when she was seeing a therapist, she wasn't, um, she wasn't telling them that about any of her online stuff. There's no way that even, even, even with a psychiatrist, because a psychiatrist, you don't have to, you don't tell them like your day-to-day -day stuff and everything that you're dealing with, but you do kind of generally tell them like what's going on in your life. There's no way for me to get my proper psychiatric treatment without telling my psychiatrist about the stuff that I do online. And this is my second job. Like you can, huh, how, how, how are you able to get any sort of support if you don't, if you're not even honest about what you fucking do? what e everything you do, because this is not even just a nine to five job. This, this job really consumes your life. <sighs> I don't know that there will ever be a day that comes that I don't, that I lack the capacity to get fired up about Gabby Hanna. And there are times that I feel really embarrassed about that. There are times that I feel really guilty for being this way. And then I hear Peter Mont say, nope, I'll never get so sick of talking about Gabby Hanna. She's interesting. This stuff, like it's content for days. It's like, it's not just content for days, but it's just like talking points for days and days and days. Imagine like, just look at how much energy that person has to throw at other people. It's, it's infuriating. So I did want to mention that about, about all of these times where it's like, I'm so healthy. I'm so healthy. I've got a, I'm on a regular poop schedule and in a stable relationship. You know, that shit was a lie. Um, uh, you know, and I'm so healthy and I'm so strong and I'm hot as fuck and all of that. And, and don't get me wrong. You can, you can know or believe that you're hot as fuck and feel strong, I suppose, and be in your ED, but to be like, to be putting out this message that you're in such a healthy place to your fans and then retroactively going back and being like height of my ED there also height of my ED there. Oh, oh also height of my ED there. I didn't know it was an ED, but height of it there. It's when were you not at the height of it? Yeah, you know, like maybe don't like maybe now's not the time to be posting pictures in your underwear and starting in OnlyFans and acting like you're feeling yourself if you're also pushing the message that like the way you do it is by means that are very unhealthy for oneself. So um sorry, that was kind of a rant. <laughs> um thank you, Devin, for telling people to like and subscribe. Um let's read another um email. From oh, I was I was starting to read from Naomi, who works on on shows and movies with budgets of over a hundred million dollars. Um, they said, "I want to contextualize Gabriana's behavior and back up Daniel. There are A list actors, hell, even A list divas, who don't act the way she did." A-listers know better than to bitch to the people making them look good. They bitch to their reps, but Gabby Hanna doesn't have enough clout to get away with that. At CAA, I'm not sure what that is get away with that at CAA. I'm not sure what that means, but calling a PA a dumb cunt is next level evil though. PAs work so hard for so little and everyone knows, um, and everyone knows they're just communicating what they've been told. Yep. PAs aren't decision makers or responsible in any way for what's going on and the, and only the lowest of the low degrade them leaving part of my email signatures proof that I work in the industry, which is a really good point. And I know that, um, love them or hate them. Nick and Dustin made a really good comparison, um, with, uh, production staff, uh, particularly PAs. And if you don't know what a PA, a PA is a production assistant. I'm not, I don't work in production. So, um, I only know a very limited amount. If you've ever watched a fantastic show on HBO, um, called high maintenance. There was some crossover because on that show, Hannibal Buress was, uh, was in one episode and the guy, the guy, um, in the show, he's going to visit Hannibal, but he can't get to his neighborhood because they're shooting a scene of, uh, girls in Hannibal's neighborhood. And so he's talking to the PA and begging the PA to let him get by. And the PA is like so anxious because it's like, he's like, Ugh, like I've, I've been given this instruction. Same thing happened. Tell me if anybody has seen the documentary long shot on, um, on Netflix. Thank God for PAs. I don't want to ruin, I don't want to ruin that, uh, that documentary for anybody who hasn't seen it, but yeah, they are, their job is just to, to, to pass along the information, to make sure that people do and don't go where they need to be and need to not be. And they're really just like, they're just the messengers. 
And Nick and Dustin compared it to long shot. You know, <laughs> Jake and I had that in common when we first met. We were both like, have you ever seen that documentary long shot? I'm like, yeah, nobody that I know watches lo watch long shot. And we both like love it because it's a feel good one. Um, yeah, no arguments, please, guys. Um, or like if you want to. If you want, you can always remember, um, if you have like a longer point to make, remember, you can also do that as a comment on the actual video itself. I don't know if that has to wait until it's processed. Um, but if you want to actually have like a conversation around something like it, it could be, you could maybe cop or like put those in a draft somewhere and put them in the comments. Cause I'm sure people will be happy to have the conversation with you there. Um, what, how did I get into long shot? Okay. Yeah. Just talking about production assistants and Nick and Dustin compared them to wait staff. And I think that was a really good comparison just to my limited knowledge of, of how these industries work. Um, but they are the, pe they are the people who are, who are working hard and for the least amount of money and the least amount of respect, really. They're, you know, not very hard, high up in this hierarchy. So um, you're a patron, Zell. Um, did you just become one? Or is your name? Some of you guys, I still need to learn your names across different platforms. Um so yeah, to, to call somebody who is working so hard and just passing along information that they need to, to call them a dumb cunt, to call anybody a dumb cunt, but you're talking about somebody with significantly less power than you have, like, fuck you, fuck you to anybody who, who does that to anybody. So next email is from our very own Leaf. Leaf says, hey, my thoughts on Gabby's series as a person with ADHD is that Gabby is wrongfully using her ADHD as a crutch to explain being a shitty person and it's not cute. And it makes me feel guilty for using my ADHD as an explanation when I know it's valid. I have more, of course, but that's all I'll say for now. Peace and love. And of course, hashtag water gang. Thank you. Thank you, Leaf. I was starting to feel thirsty from all the talking. But... I really genuinely, when you guys water gang me, I really do. I really do drink the water. Super chat from Devin. Hey, just wanted to say that the internet has felt like a full-time job this week, keeping up. And I'm thankful for you and your car. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Only because I've been so overwhelmed and I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me. Like, oh, is there something in my life that I need to like work on? Or is it because of my meds? Am I just overworked? Or am I like, it, it's just, I think it's just been exhausting. It's emotionally exhausting for the audience, for for everybody. Um, who is that Leaf person? We love we love Leaf over here. We stand. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I've been saying for the past, however long this has been going on, what, a couple months now, I've been saying that like, let's all collectively agree not to give Gabby Anna the power to talk about mental health in such a way that, you know, she attributes behaviors, good or bad, to mental health. Um, which I don't, I didn't, no, I don't mean to say good or bad. I mean like bad behaviors, whether it be to, to excuse herself or to be like, look, you've got this, you know, personality disorder, which means you do this thing, which by the way, like the way she, that she was like, Trisha Paytas has BPD and B people with BPD project. See this, this screenshot that I found from Google. I, I showed that you could do the same thing with ADHD. You can do that with anything. Take anxi anxiety, which so many people have. Type anxiety and projection. You'll find something on Google. But I, I've been saying, like, let's all agree not to let her speak on behalf of, of our mental disorders and our neurodivergency. Um, and then to see her say projection is a, you know, a, a behavior attributed to BPD and addiction, that hurt, that hurt so personally. And then it made me realize, okay, Alicia, you're, you're saying nice things. But um, this is probably more difficult than I know personally for it to be. So only in only to that extent, Leaf, do I understand what you mean when you say like it makes me feel guilty. And and in a sense, like it, I feel guilty for using some of the words that she uses. This is me trying to relate, and it's a bit of a stretch. And I'm sorry, um, but I but I'm saying that. I can conceptualize what you're saying. Um, you know, I want to sometimes talk and use words like gaslight or, um, or even talk about how there are certain, sometimes I feel really guilty because I wonder it, when I talk about my sobriety, am I, does that sound the same way? 
because, you know, I've, and I haven't told you guys this, but you know, the way that Oscar said that his sobriety was really tested earlier this year with dealing with the, the hate mobs that Gabby was sending his way. I said a very similar thing. My, I almost did not make it out of that day sober. And I'm so grateful to the, all the, the people that helped me get there. And then looking back, I'm like, oh God, like, am I just pulling a Gabby Hanna and just being like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an addict and like, I don't, I don't want to ask anybody to do me any favors and I don't want to excuse any behavior in any way like that. So I, I get it is what I'm saying to, to whatever extent I can, I think. Um, and it sucks. I'm glad that you get my explanation leaf because I was like, that made no fucking sense. <laughs> Thank you for, um, for sending that back to me. Hey, we have over 1300 people, um, in the chat. Hey guys, I'm so flattered that you're here for my little old podcast. Um, so Marissa says, Hey, <laughs> um, Oh wait. Oh, sorry. That's actually a copy and paste of what leaf had said. So I'm like, wait, why are my patrons all saying the same thing? Let me go back. Marissa said, hi, it's Marissa Del Playa from Discord and all of the things. I just want to say that Gabby's series really is harming a lot of people, and it is really hard to watch personally. Admittedly, I have not watched all that she's put out in the series because of the anxiety, but this girl is so delusional. She really thinks she is doing something, and she's just digging herself such a big hole. The cats need to unplug the Wi-Fi, honestly. Anyways, love you. Love you too, Marissa. Um, same, to be honest with you. And, you know, I have more of a responsibility to actually watch all of these things so that when I do sit here and talk about them, I'm fully informed. But I have... I have missed an episode or two because with that first chapter, I was really, honestly, I really thought that she was going to come through. I genuinely thought that she was really going to come through and just lay out the facts, right? And tell us like, when you're going to give us, give us a docu-series, right? I mean, I guess it can be in all many different forms. This is really, this docu-series is really just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if this comes across offensive, but in my opinion, it's not. Addiction is a disease and a disorder like anything else. But um, like when you're watching um, documentaries like, um, what's that show? Intervention. When you're watching all of this footage of people with, with diseases and disorders and you're seeing their disordered behavior and you're seeing the emotional toll it takes on them. Um, you know, also shows like my 600 pound life. A lot of these, these um, stories of people pre treatment and even through treatment, but in, but I'm specifically talking about the pre, you know, that footage, the footage that shows you the people really struggling through it. That's what this is. If we're calling this a docu-series, it's just really showing us a person who is disordered in many ways and just has shit character in many ways and is not being treated and is not holding themselves accountable and is not accepting any sort of accountability that anybody's asking of them. So you're really just seeing all of this untreated mess is what you're seeing. I really thought that perhaps by docu-series, she was going to come out with 13 different topics and be like, here are the facts, guys, and just lay it all out. Maybe that's just me thinking that's the way things should be done because maybe that's just how I do it. But um, yeah, I fucking said that to anybody out there who doesn't like me that I said that. I said it. Um, but, oh, <laughs> Zell, well said, well said. Thank you. Um I really thought that she was going to sit down because I know she's done a video that said something like, you know, all of rice gums lies with proof or whatever. I don't know if I've watched that one, I, but I know that title exists somewhere out there or something similar. And so I thought that it was going to be like, look, this is what happened the night of the rice gum situation. This is what people are not telling you. This is what people are not showing you. Here's this, 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 this. And really it was just a little bit of that and mostly just her screaming and everything turns into a bigger conversation about how people are being oppressed. People in the public eye are being oppressed in general. And you know that she's just talking about herself. So that's what I hate is that every single one of these chapters turns into her bitching and crying about somebody else when you know she's talking about herself and that and the whole the screaming at the camera and making it's this is all your fault type of stuff has made me not want to watch this series. Um, Jean, you're back. 
says the overlapping chaotic ADHD makes me uncomfortable. Me too. I hate it so much. Like you, we get it. You proved your point. You have ADHD. We get it. And that's not in any way for me to say, I know that there are people, somebody, I don't remember what her name was or what their name was, but this person made a video saying that like for some people, really good point whether it be ADHD, some other neurological issue or mental health thing. For some people, it is like, I'm not going to let that define me or be a defining character characteristic of mine, right? And some people are like, no, 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 this is a big part of me. And it is going to be a defining characteristic of mine. Um, for me personally, addiction is, it's not, it's not what I put at the forefront, at the, like the number one most important thing about me. But it is important because, and that for me, thank you, Renee, just a donation with nothing to say. I appreciate that. That's altruistic of you. Um, but um, it, people are different, whether whether they want to, to put themselves forward and not shine a light on whatever that thing is that they are dealing with. Um, and there are some people who go hard for it and they're like, I'm going to tell you all about it. I love this. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of like being who I am either despite this or because of this or a combination of the two. Um, that's fine. That's totally fine. Show us your, your adventures in ADHD, but this all just feels like sometimes it, it feels like her just behaving in ways that other people do, like we all do. And then just being like, there's my ADHD. See, like you guys see me go off on tangents all the time. I get distracted all the time. And to be honest with you, I my I maybe could have ADD, ADHD or something similar. I've wondered if I've had learning disabilities. Um, I've talked to friends who have learning disabilities who think I may have them. Um, and so there's learning disabilities. If I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm right, confirm if I'm right. But learning disabilities like dyslexia, um, are in the neurodivergence, neuro, yeah, the neurodivergence and neurodiversity category. Um, and also some professionals argue that addiction falls under, falls under that umbrella too. So now I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but fucking stop vilifying people by calling them neurotypicals. You don't fucking know. You don't know if the next person is neurodivergent or neurotypical. You don't get to say that unless they have expressed that to you. I hate that. I hate that so much. Um, I think I need a water gang myself. <laughs> I'm getting so worked up and talking so much. Um, but yes, Marissa, good points to those. And I appreciate you because you give me donations and send me emails. <laughs> you, you support this, this, uh, this podcast in so many ways. And you're a patron. Thank you. Thank you for being a patron. Leaf as well. And everybody else who's here that's a patron. I've only got a couple more. Holly said, hi, Leash. I don't want Gabby's ED to become something I'm laser focused on, but I've been in recovery for an ED for the last 14 years. Congratulations on being in recovery. Um, and it really is angering how she not only puts morality and judgment, judgmental words on food, but blame shifts to everyone else except herself. What are your thoughts? about that. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, the whole using language, um, like morality and judgmental words around link, uh, around food is something that I wasn't really all that cognizant of until Leah Elpis, who's a mod of my chat until watching one of her videos recently. So it's something that I've only recently started with the whole, um, Demi Lovato thing. So perhaps that, that whole situation did serve purpose in a sense. Um, while I let that thought like marinate and actually flesh out, I'm going to read what Marissa said here. I do th sympathize with Gabby Hanna as a person who is disabled and really just learned that to be like, oh, this is why I am this way is so helpful. But ah, yeah, I think, and I wonder, Marissa, if you too are one of the people who watched, somebody please uh, share in the chat if you know who I'm talking about. There was somebody who gave their perspective as somebody with ADHD and everything that they experienced when they first learned about it and how hard they went about um, just representing it everywhere and, and learning about it and becoming obsessed with it in a way that's unhealthy. Um, and this person speculated that perhaps that's what Gabby's going through. And I, I can see that it makes a lot of sense. The masked simmer said, since most of us have mental health issues, we're more typical 
than those who don't. Right. Right. That's part of the reason that this is so maddening to me is that this is like to have something is the new norm. Right. So like fucking calling people neurotypical, like when you don't know shit about those people, it's just so it's bullshit. Um, so you said, yes, I watched that leaf. Um, yeah. And they also talked about, yeah, they talked about their Adderall and, and how that affected everything too. Now. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so what else did, did you, so you were talking about, um, this was Holly talking about the, the words of morality and judgmental words around, around food. I am only now becoming cognizant of just our culture doing that and diet, diet culture in general. And it's something that I grapple with because I understand the concept that like food should not be um, given these like stigmas as more, these moral stigmas at the same time. I don't, mm, I don't, I don't know that I should speak on this. I don't, because I also, I also struggle with EDs and I'm also in recovery for probably, I, I don't know how many EDs because just like Gabby said, like this could probably be categorized. I'm sure that I have certain behaviors that can be categorized in different ways. At the same time, I do think that there are certain things that are, there are certain things as indulgences, which is not a bad thing. I think sometimes some of these things we we put negativity around the concept when isn't necessarily in nature. And the only reason I'm saying that is because there's in our spirit club we talked about the concept of like um, indulgence versus overindulgence or something like that. I mean, these are words that are attributed to food before anything else. Um, it's not in, inherently, I don't think necessarily we should be just like, that shouldn't be the default is to use words of judgment around food. That shouldn't be the default people feeling a certain way about food because they, for whatever reason, can't eat certain foods. Or I, I do think that people should be allowed to diet. Like if that's one thing that I don't agree with, with kind of some of this conversation is that like people should be allowed to make these changes themselves as long as they're doing so in a healthy way. Um, and because of that, you can feel certain ways around, you know, certain behaviors. Just, be, it's just like me trying to be, trying to be healthy and strong and, and make sure that I'm being active and working out and talking myself out of a workout. I'm not addicted to the gym by any stretch of the imagination. I'm also not as active as I should be since I started quarantine and um, YouTube. So I should be more active because it's what my body <laughs> really should have. I should have more steps in a day. So I do have guilt around that. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to tell myself that like, ah, it's fine. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, if I feel bad about that, it's all because of diet culture. No, but at the same time, if there is a day where I feel like I just need to rest, I need to allow myself not to, uh, not to feel guilty about that. If I want to eat a food because that's what my body is craving, then I shouldn't feel guilty about that. It's such a complicated thing. I really shouldn't speak on this. Unsteady Eddie says, sent you an email about this just now, but I thought you should look into Anna Campbell's situation when you get a chance to remind me of Gabby. Thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, but as it relates to Gabby Hanna, um, I do think that when you have a platform, especially a big platform, especially if you're talking about your body, your weight and your exercise and your, your uh, self image and EDs, I think you really should be way more, uh, really cognizant of that. And Gabby talks about that stuff so much. So, you know, as much as I'm like, I don't know that I'm saying the right words about this stuff, like she should know more about the right words to be using. I don't talk about this nearly as much as she does. Um, I'm trying to read the rest of your email again to remind myself. Shifts blame on everyone else except herself. Um, I think those are two different concepts. So, um, you know, the, the diet culture language is not something that I don't know that I'm comfortable putting all my thoughts out on right now. I also keep in mind, I'm a product of the nineties too. So I am realizing by existing on the internet, having a platform on the internet, like, oh my God, like very much. I am that old person that is like certain things are like in certain ways, my head is stuck 
in the nineties. And so, um, you know, I don't hate everything about that, but certain parts of that are not as progressive as we'd like to be. Um, but shifting blame to everyone else absolutely is a Gabby problem because even though people are going to be sensitive, just like Daniel Prado was, uh, sensitive to, um, Gabby's ED. Oh, let me make sure that I've got all these donations. Um, okay. Nikki Grimm says it feels like Gabby apologizes just so people can apologize back to her. Yeah. Not because she thinks she's in the wrong. Yeah. She put that in her, one of her videos that more often than not apologies should be reciprocal. No, they're not. No, they're not. And if you're apologizing just to get one back, then that's a bullshit apology in the first place. Fuck you. Um, thank you for bringing that point up. But, um, yeah, there, I think the, the whole like throwing out, I have an ED is in my opinion, a cop out and to blame somebody else. Somebody said something like, you know, if I had these issues or I've been, I've had these issues before. And I think it was Naley in that really long thread, Naley, the maybe that you posted, this, this was your longest to date. Um, but saying something like, I know what it's like to have EDs and to come prepared. And like, it's not the most positive message to be like, come prepared for your ED. But at the same time, like if you're going to blame anybody for it, I, and, and so one of the things that I say, like it might be kind of characteristic of an ED or might seem like an ED or what, but I'm a super picky eater. I get really like easily grossed out by a lot of things. Um, I, I, I'm some, some, 2020 calls it a, a super tasting that it's like a, an ability, but either way, like I get very afraid of going certain places where like, maybe they're going to have foods that freak me out. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to, like, I'm going to be hungry. I'm going to starve. So like, I shit you not, I will pack granola bars when I go somewhere if I don't know if there's going to be a food there for me that I will like. And so it's kind of just like, yeah, like for one, I, I don't think anybody really buys that they didn't have food there for her to eat, but you have access to a girl like, come on, you can, I didn't have time to pack a lunch because blah, 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 blah. you couldn't grab a fucking granola bar on your way out. And also um, they've made a good point that a few people or a few people have made a point that like they could have postmated Uber eats or whatever their stuff while they were there, even though there were so many other things that they did to accommodate her. Like Daniel said, he told her, Hey, I'm on my way out to whole foods, but he really didn't plan to go to whole foods. He was going to go there just to appease Gabby. Um, and so to pass the buck on everyone else, when they've done so much, when they've given you the form to, to express your dietary restrictions, they have given you the form to, to place your orders and to, to make your requests. They did have healthy snacks there in the, in the trailers and all of that. They had all of these things and you had access to meal delivery services on top of the fact that one of the, that the senior producer went out to Whole Foods to get you whatever you needed. You, um, I have heard stories about Gabby being so cheap. I'm sorry to use that word, but so cheap that she would, hmm, I gotta be careful with what I say because depending on who I hear it from, like I can get in trouble, but just like not paying people for things that she should pay people for. And so like, I'm sorry, but you're talking about how like mm, YouTube shorted me five to $10 million or whatever. We don't want to hear you complain about money. And then also in the same breath, talk about how you didn't have access to the food that you needed. It's like, dude, if I were in your position, I've got a lot less money. I would fucking Uber eat something. My God. Um, B Lynn, let me calm down. Um, yes, dyslexia, dyslexia, excuse me. Yes, dyslexia and other learning disabilities are considered neurotypical and many people with LD have ADHD and ADD, but Gabby Hanna goes into a space of performative and overcompensating for her lack of accountability with it. It hurts a lot of us. It's yeah, it's, she totally does. Um, She's taking away the meaning. And I just hope that everybody knows that even if I can't say, hey, like, let's not let her take it away right now, we will recover from this. Um, you see all dicks backwards. It was kind of ironic um, reading that word and mispronouncing it. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't like anything about this ED narrative and how it plays into the fucking escape the night shit. Like, 
she was in that she was clearly a nightmare to work with. That is the word that everybody used. And as Daniel said, and has been expressed by how many likes on Twitter, that pretty much almost everybody there on the casting crew had an issue with her. I think that throwing out, I had an ED and you made it worse is just, sorry, it sounds like a cop out to me. It sounds like a cheap blow because that's one of those things like like people say that Daniel doesn't shy away from drama. Um, you know, he didn't have all that much sympathy for her, but then he he takes a moment because it's one of those things where it's like you you're going to be an asshole perhaps if you are not sensitive to this thing. So it's cheap. It's getting people to to be sensitive to something. Um, I'll be that asshole if that's what it takes um, to, to express that. So I have two more emails, one from Kara and one from Kira. So Kara says, it's so funny watching Gabby's videos about Trisha because it's just constant mirroring, echoing the same things about each other. Also, Gabby calling Trisha delusional and paranoid has less weight than you take into consideration that Trisha is diagnosed with schizophrenia. Gabby has no diagnosis of the kind. So when she has paranoia and delusions, it's even more concerning because she's she supposedly she supposedly only has ADHD. Not that mental health is always an excuse for Trisha either, but it can give an actual explanation as opposed to Gabby trying to use ADHD to excuse all of her bad behavior. Yeah. And in general, let me make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, uh, Renee says I could only get through one episode the way she flashes psych definitions and blames ADHD for actually hurts my heart so much. Me too. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, hi, Elena. Um, I hate seeing the 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 overlays, the D, the ADHD speaking overlays. I hate that. I hate all of the Google pop ups because you can Google anything. You can go any Google will tell you anything you want it to tell you. You can say Google, my my chest is tight. Please tell me I'm not dying, and it'll say you're not dying. But usually, what we look for is that like we actually have cancer and are dying. <laughs> but like you can get Google to tell you anything you want. Um, so I hate that. I hate that too. Um, but to this point, um, about the mental health thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just to put it broadly. I mean, everybody else has these issues, right? Oh, you're delusional. Oh, you're so paranoid. You're obsessed. You're all of this and that and the other, but when it's Gabby, it's because of ADHD or an ED. I was a bitch. Just kidding. I wasn't a bitch. I was just laying my boundaries. But I'm a woman. And anytime a woman lays a boundary, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, it's just cop-outs. Fucking cop-outs left and right. Um, October says, as someone who had their ED encouraged because it fits his fetish, Gabby is doing so much damage for victims. Ugh. Oh, that sucks, October. God, I'm sorry. She constantly does that. Uh, yeah, she's... It's it's difficult because we see people like Eugenia Cooney and they are so physically like obvious to many of us that they are um, unwell, physically unwell. And it's so easy to look at con uh, content creators like that and be like, this behavior needs to stop because it's so overt. And Gabby Hanna, on the other hand, looks very much like you're like a normal person, quote, quote, unquote, right? Um, like a, like a normal, healthy weight. Uh, but her behaviors, if you look at them, you're like the, I am in my, in my thirties and having been in recovery from these EDs for however long I have been, I still was like 900 calories in five days. Oh, cause I'm like, I was in quarantine gaining weight. And so like, that's, I'm sorry, that's just so triggering to so many people. And it's not only just triggering, but it's also laying out a prescription for them. Like if you want to ha lose weight the way that I did, here it is. I shouldn't have even repeated it. Jane says, I didn't like the argument that Colleen did it and she had a baby. Things affect people different, very differently, but there's zero reason to be abusive. Yeah, I think that for a second, I think them using Colleen as an example, I, for a minute I was just like, yeah, what does that have to do with the price of eggs in China? At the same time, I do understand the point they're making that there were people that all, not necessarily that like have it worse, but people who also have a lot going on in their lives. I think in terms of making that point, I get it because 
Gabby was making a point that like they're having these long days on shoots and then there's no time for anything else. And I think they were trying to illustrate a point and I think it's probably, they think they're probably making a stronger point by using as an, an example. And for a lot of people, it probably is that, but it might've been stronger just to be like the way that some of them said it before. I think Joey said it in his video, like this is just how it works on sets. Like you, you, you go for a few days at a time and you go hard and you have time to just like sleep for a little bit in between. So like scheduling your gym appointments in like during these shoots and not being able to make your call times because of that is, is, and I think Daniel was the one who said it's embarrassing to have to pass that information along to your crew. And like, I, I get that. I think them making the illustrating that point, I get it, but I, I also agree with you that there might've been stronger ways of making that point. Shiloh says about 1% of the general population has narcissistic personality disorder yet. Apparently everyone Gabby knows is narcissistic. Um, and of course you will make the argument that, you can call people's behavior narcissistic pe or people can display narcissistic behavior um, without being a narcissist. But I'm sorry, but like if you're not calling somebody a narcissist, then stop using that word so much. You know, like I don't I don't use that word when referring to people. There are other adjectives. If it's giving the impression that you're calling somebody a narcissist, maybe try different words at least once in a while. I mean, I, I totally agree with your point. <laughs> um, also, Kira says, hey, Leash, in Gabby's video today, she got so offended by telling her that she needs help saying, that's really disgusting. That's gross. What is actually, what is actually truly disgusting and gross? Blaming Trisha for her S word ideation. This is all Gabby being defensive over the consequences of not treating her mental health issues. Kira, thank you. Thank you, because that is something that I thought, too. It's not fair. It's really not fair because, because uh, just like somebody said earlier, Gabby Hanna is, is believable without being credible. She points out, because I, I'm going to be real, I thought the same thing. I wonder how many of you guys thought the same thing last year when Trisha said, Gabby, you said that your greatest fear was that you were going crazy, for lack of a better word. Gabby used that word. Trisha used that word. I use that word. I'm being real with you. Um, but I understand the fear. Um, and I've, I remember Gabby saying that on her podcast, like my fear is that, uh, that I would lose my mind, that I'd go crazy and not know. Um, and I remember when Trisha said like, this is your wake up call. This is happening. I, when I heard Trisha say that, I took that as Trisha being like very genuine. Like, um, not necessarily saying like, oh, you're completely hysterical or you're completely detached from reality 100%, but like you are losing your, you are detaching yourself from reality and it's becoming more and more, um, just a bigger and bigger problem. And, and their, your reactions are becoming more visceral and everything is just pointing towards lack of mental wellness and, and also Gabby seems to be kind of um, clueless to the fact that this is happening because she continues to dig herself into this hole where she's all by herself into this, like, I'm going to start mixing metaphors here, but like into this like little echo chamber where everybody, everybody in the world is a problem, not her. It's, ev it's literally fucking everyone but Gabby is the problem. And first of all, I'm sorry, um, armchair psychology here, but there's an indicator there that something is wrong. If there's, if literally everybody in the world is a problem, but you. And so I like when Trisha said that I agreed, I was like, well, the thing that Gabby said she's afraid of happening looks like it might be happening. Uh, I'm going to take a break. Calm down. Read what steady Eddie, unsteady Eddie has to say. Gabby is both the husband and the wife in the movie Gaslight. Oh, <laughs> that's a big one. Um, yeah, possibly even doing it to herself. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard that one, though. That's big. That's rich. You should tweet that. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's just like the fact that that Trisha says that, right? And and perhaps it's out of line because Trisha is not um, Gabby's friend or loved one or what have you. But the sentiment I think was valid, and it's me as a bystander who doesn't really know these people very well. Um, I could I could even say like I could genuinely say if I never started my YouTube channel, never had any sort of interaction with Gabby Han at all. I would still think that. I would still think, oh my God, that thing that she's afraid of happening is happening. And I think that that's valid. That doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean that it's happening. But to be making these observations and to say like, hey, that thing that she's afraid of happening looks like it might be happening is totally a valid thing to think based on these observations. Rachiru, I think your name is Rachel. Um, hi, you said Gabby's behavior makes me feel better about the narcissist in my life, which is probably not good. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. Um, but, um, oh, I do see that I have some tags that I need to get to. But, um, uh, meaning that um, some people in my Discord have tagged me. Um, but yeah, the fact that she calls that gaslighting, I understand being so, because that it's it's a very difficult pill to swallow right? If you're your greatest fear, right? You're, let's say, say that instead of using the word crazy, let's just say that like she's becoming detached from reality. I don't know if that's 100% what she means, but it's maybe more definitive and less stigmatized and, and offensive. If say her greatest fear is that she would become completely detached from reality, if that's her greatest fear, and she wouldn't know because right, you wouldn't know what reality is if that's the problem is that you're detached from it then that's a really hard pill to swallow, especially if that's your greatest fear. You know, any of us having our greatest fear to somebody telling us that, hey, like that your greatest fear is actually happening. That's so difficult. So I, I can try to be compassionate in that sense, but to turn around and call it gaslighting at the same time, it's like to gaslight somebody is to tell them that they're crazy or to make them feel like they're crazy. So at the same time, it is like, it kind of raises the question. It's like, to make somebody doubt their sense of reality is to gaslight. But what if that person really is detached from reality? Is it gaslighting to point that out? It's such a, that's such a difficult, like, why doesn't anyone talk about that? Because I seriously would like to know. Um, because I thought the same thing. I think it's a totally valid thought to have. Um, and it's not fair to call it gaslighting, especially if somebody even whether regardless of how annoyed they are with you when they're telling you. But like, I remember in those moments in that in those videos, Trisha was saying, like, get some help. And I remember that Trisha started off with a much nicer video. Um, not saying that Trisha, any of these videos were done in, in the best form. But I remember it started with the video that was like, hey, Gabby, like, it's all good. Just, you know, get some help for whatever you're going through. I've been there. I was there three times last year. There's, there's no shame in getting help for what you're going through. And of course, Gabby acts all offended in the moment because she's not going through anything, right? But then a year later says, fuck you to everybody who made fun of her going off on everyone because she was going through it which that's wrong in so many ways. I disagree with it in so many ways. We're going to have to, we're going to have to extend this conversation. Um, but I completely agree. It's so not fair when somebody is essentially saying you seem to need help and I want for you to get help and to be like, that's so gross. That's so bad and gaslighting and it's gross. No, no, it's, it's gross what you're doing to be continually putting people through all this and to be refusing to listen to anybody who says something out of genuine concern to please look into this and get some help. Somehow Oliver and Moses are fighting through the door. Um, damn. And it's also a reminder that it's been over two hours here. Um, so Kat, we're going to probably close this out soon here. Um, it's a little terrifying, but how insecure you must be of your own memory to have documented every interaction and messages you have with other people. Right. And, and also these behaviors being behaviors that you said you would never display. Right. I think people were saying that Trisha was one of her fans, uh, her being Gabby, Gabby's fan saying something about Trisha having screenshots from however long ago. And it's like, 
and then Gabby also saying, I'm not going to make a video with screenshots exposing my bullies because that's bully behavior, blah, blah, blah. And like how, and like you get, you show us all like seven external hard drives and old phones because you want to scare people with, with showing like what you've held on to. Also like let's uh, to your, to your note too. Um, to your to your point, Kat. It's also funny too because it it makes you think about. Um, did anybody else notice that G Gabby's video about Trisha? The f was it the chapter zero one maybe that said uh, where where Trisha's like Gabby, just sh then show me, show me where I said those things. And uh, Gabby go flashes some text on the screen that says I didn't have screenshots because I didn't come prepared to fight with Trisha about this, and then proceeds to rattle off screenshots from various years in order. She was like, um, she was like, um, sorry guys with the chat. Like, be respectful, please. Um, but yeah, she was just like, 2016, you said this. 2017, you said this. And it's just like, ugh, that doesn't sound healthy. And also, it sounds like very much the opposite of what you said you came to this conversation with. So this was mostly my thoughts on the, the Trisha aspect of those this docuseries on huh? just so I can change the title to be more accurate, <laughs> probably. Um, yeah, it turns out like I have not been talking about this stuff and probably because I've, I've been wanting to give make space for other topics, um, but there's just so much that I probably should. Uh, I probably should have more conversations with you guys around this stuff. Um, let me double check my, uh, make sure my mods, because my mods might be yelling at me. Um, Oh, my motto is saying, everything is fine, carry on. Thank you for that. Um, I don't see any other tags. So please, guys, if I missed anything, if it needs to be addressed absolutely right now, somebody just like uh, scream. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been trying to make... Um, it, anybody who's saying that they're an INFJ in the chat, by the way, maybe that's why we like each other because INFJs... ENFJs make best friends to, to INFJs. And that's what I am. So hello. Um, yeah, I bet you a lot of you guys are INFJs and that's why we love each other. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just saying that I think that I was kind of clearing out some of the Gabby because it was so much Gabby talk because there's so much really going on. This is, she's, she's really flailing. She's really like putting on a big show as she goes out because she's going out. I believe that's happening. Um, and so I, I think I took a break to kind of focus on some other things, the frenemies, fallout, um, creep show stuff. Then there was, of course, just some other stuff around other creators. We talked about Tati and, and, and Shane and Jeffrey and all those people um, last week. But uh, the fact of the matter is this stuff is going on and people are pissed off. And so I think I'm probably going to have to continue this into next week especially as we're going to get the other half of this series, because by the way, I just want to say this. I think it's stupid for her to be releasing one video a day. <laughs> like you, you tease this whole series that she didn't do a good job on. Like you're not like laying out the facts. You're not being logical and steady and, and just showing facts. You're being highly emotional, which is not in and of itself a bad thing, but the fact that that's all it is and you're just yelling at us and you're just telling us how bad we are for how you are being oppressed and then you're not even giving it any time in between for people to like create buzz around what you're doing. It's every single day. It's a different issue. You're just pissing people off and getting people really heated. And it's all going to happen over the course of two weeks. And then it's going to be done. You could have had this go Gabby, you could have had this go on for the rest of the year. You really could have with this. You really could have have done one a week or every other week or something and, and really stretched this out and, and helped your career in that sense if you're talking about just keeping your name relevant. But you didn't. You can't resist. And you got to do it every single day. And so that's a stupid move in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I think that we're probably going to have to end this now because it's already 8.24. We've been at this for over two hours. I know that Sajak has a, a video. So please... Um, go over to Fat Sajak's channel. I don't know if she's already started her video in Premiere, um, but I would love to raid her Premiere if it is in, um, if the chat window is open. So um, let's talk about this some more next week.
since obviously I have a lot to say. Um, Nikki says, I, it just dawned on me that Gabby doesn't really want to be heard or understood. She just cannot stand that she's not, that she's not being adored. It is sad, really. Yeah. And I don't, I, I have enough sympathy and compassion for her and that I'm sure that it sucks not to be liked. Just, I am generally like the feedback on my channel is pretty positive. I'm upset because I had a video that the like to dislike ratio was in the sixties. Um, and that's been pretty hard. And then of course, like the usual hate that YouTubers get, I've been getting, and that's been pretty hard, but otherwise like I'm for the most part more in, in the public's favor, my audience's favor. And even then that stuff is still hard for me. So I I'm sure that like, again, in a way, like there are two different ways I can put this. I can say either like, no, I don't fucking feel jealous of Gabby in any sense, stands who say that I'm jealous of her. Look at her. Why would I want to be her? She's so miserable. And then on the other hand, I can say it in a nicer way and then just be like, I do have a lot of sympathy and compassion for her because she's very much not in the public favor. And she does have to hear a lot of criticism and a lot of hate about herself all the time. Both are true. Both are valid. Um, I forgot exactly what your point, what your message was. Um, so, but like, you've got to, it, you can't just get people to love you overnight and you certainly can't do it by arguing with the audience. You've got to do this, take it one step at a time. It, yes, it takes time, but with anything that takes progress in order to get better, even the little time, the baby steps do feel good. So if she would just do the work, take the punch, the initial punch that, that it takes to start making things get better. She can be so much happier. I really genuinely believe she could be so much happier if she were willing to look inside. And I've said this since the beginning of my channel. And so I'm going to try to, I'm just going to try to pause here so that we can um, come back to this uh, next week, most likely. Um, well, I'll probably have some sort of video about some of this. Why are you jealous? Can we stop that? Yes, please. Let's stop that. Um, all right, guys, I super, super want to thank the 1,084 of you who are still here. Um, if you could like this video, please, um, especially if I said anything that you do like. Um, if you didn't like this video, you can give it a dislike. Um, like I said, if you had other conversations that you want to continue from this from this conversation, please comment on the video itself. Um, of course, like I love the engagement, but also it's, I think a better place. Or we can have these conversations on Twitter and don't give me any money whatsoever however you want to do this. Um, but if you could, yes, as Leaf put it, put it, if you could spare a like, please. Um, I appreciate it very much. And I so appreciate you guys coming here. Head over to uh, Fat Sage X channel because she for sure has some entertaining content coming for us here soon, I believe. And if I'm totally lying to you guys, I apologize for that. <laughs> this, was, this was a really good live. Thank you guys uh, for being here with me and making this, making me feel really fantastic. Toss a like to your Alicia. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, I will catch you over, uh, patrons. You guys already know the, the drill. These people who are in blue are some longtime patrons. You hear other people, patron, patrons in the chat, fantastic, amazing people who've created a fantastic, amazing place that always makes me feel better about life when things are difficult. Um, if you want to join, feel free to go to hellolish.com slash Patreon. Otherwise you can still interact with us on Twitter or other places that are free. Um, but uh, either way, I just appreciate you being here and I'm going to catch you next week slash discord slash social media slash like, really, you can't ever lose me. You can't ever get rid of me. So I'm here to stay at least for now. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. I'm going to go put together some furniture. Love you. Bye. Oh, wait, Renee, I'm super late. Starting to the beginning. Half speed. One half speed, but hello. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Hashtag water gang.